Hi, I'm Fed and I'm learning to make by watching tons and tons of videos and pouring all that information through my eye holes and into my brain bucket. Today I'm doing a learning project where I put some of those videos into practice and I'll be building a workbench with pocket hole joinery. It's going to be very cool if you, if you like workbenches and pocket hole joinery. Hi, I'm Fed. Ouch. For my next project, I wanted to challenge myself. And for some dumb reason, I thought it'd be interesting and challenging to teach a teenager about fax machines and why they were popular in the 80s and 90s, uh, like, a, like a little mini tech lesson. But uh, apparently, um, fax machines are dumb and people who like them are also dumb. And um, why didn't they just send TikToks or something like that? So, um, yeah. So as I'm sure you gathered from my introduction, I decided to pick another project. Since I'm running out of space in my tiny workshop, I decided that a workbench with drawers space would be a lot more practical and less hurtful to my feelings. Last year, I took Steve Ramsey's course, The Weekend Workshop, and one of the projects in that, that course was what he calls the BMW Plus, the, which is the new version of his basic mobile workbench, BMW. And uh, it's a really great design, and it's simple to build, but there was two things I wanted to do differently. First, I wanted to use trimmed two by fours, that is cut off parts of the two by four to get rid of those rounded edges that two by fours have. I wanted to do that because I think it looks nice. I like the look of a clean square edge on a two by four, but also it lets you get the pieces together a little bit more, more closely. So it's slightly more, more compact. The other thing I wanted to do was I wanted to use pocket hole joinery instead of the overlapping two by fours in Steve's design. Why did I want to use pocket hole joinery? A lot of people don't like pocket hole joinery. They think it's cheating. They kind of hate on it. I like it for a couple of different reasons. One is it's fairly simple to do. It makes strong joints. And also it doesn't require the skill level that you would need for doing, for example, mortises and tenons or even dowels, which is still pretty hard to do. And for the purposes of creating a compact design where the pieces are still held together very well, pocket hole joinery seemed perfect. As I often do, I started my design in Fusion 360. It helps me think as I'm putting things together. I had Steve's design in mind, but I made a few different changes. So for example, his design has six drawers. I wanted more, so mine has seven. <laughs> one more, that's one more better. He also has these really nice doors over the shelf, and I decided I didn't need those doors. But what I did keep are the the wheels that go on the bottom of the workbench, which is what makes it mobile. Smart. Yeah. I had a bunch of four by eight sheets of plywood delivered to my home, so I had to break those down first. I did that outside, and then I moved inside to break down the smaller pieces that I had going. I also had to cut two pieces that had to be exactly the same size. So I measured the first piece and then used that cut piece to draw a line for the second piece. That would ensure that both pieces were exactly the same size. I started trimming all the two by four ends to keep them clean. And then I measured my first piece marked it up and cut it. And then that piece became a template for all the pieces that followed. This ensured that all the pieces were exactly the same length without having to remeasure for every single cut. Next up, I started the long job of uh, trimming all the two by fours 
to give them square edges. I started by first cutting all the two by fours to about three and a quarter inches. I used a piece of tape also to keep the small cutoffs from falling behind the blade since I don't have a zero clearance plate for my table saw. Once I had finished with one side of the two by fours, I trimmed the other side so that the two by fours were exactly three inches wide. I also upped my trimming game by using a feather board and made it a lot smoother. Before drilling all the pocket holes, I refer to my Da Vinci light drawings to help me visualize where the screws were going to go so I didn't have any screws running into other screws. When you use pocket holes, you need to hold the pieces together in alignment. Otherwise, when you screw the screw in, it can become misaligned. That's what this tool here is being used for. It holds the pieces together. I made my way around the rest of the frame, putting in screws into the pocket holes. Here's where I discovered that even if you make square edges on a two by four, it might still be twisted, which will make it be out of alignment. Oh, and watch this, this is a fun moment. I put in a screw and then I try putting in a screw in the same exact spot and I'm surprised. Why isn't this working? Smart. Here's another place where I use the technique of not measuring to maintain accuracy, but instead using an existing piece as a template for alignment. This was also a good way to check my work as I went along, ensuring that both sides of the frame were the same size. This is another pocket hole tool that allows you to align two perpendicular pieces using one of the pocket holes as a guide. I was getting a little carried away and then screwed this vertical piece in before realizing that I didn't need it. Since a few of the two by fours had twists in them, they didn't lay completely flat. So I used a, a hand plane to clean them up. I was concerned about strength of the vertical legs. So I added these extra supports on the outside of the six legs. I don't know if I really needed them, but it was very sturdy, so. I lined up the top of the workbench and measure to make sure that when I screwed it in, I was screwing into wood and not into air. Next up was attaching the casters and I just did it carefully to make sure that I wasn't gonna be driving a screw between two two by fours or causing one to crack.
Once the frame was done, I measured out the size of the bottom supports and then cut them to size and drilled pocket holes into them. When I went to screw in the bottom supports, I realized that I would need some sort of spacers or something to align those pieces to the frame because they weren't the same height as the rest of the frame. So I added some, some pieces of wood that were just thick enough to, to allow me to align it. I also realized that I needed to add some supports on the two ends of where the bottom shelf was going to be because I originally thought that the bottom shelf would be half inch plywood, but I couldn't get any. So, and I had to use quarter inch plywood, which was a little bit too bendy. New tool alert. This is a mini saw, a mini circular saw that I wanted to get, well, because I wanted tools, but also because I'm cutting this quarter inch plywood and I figured I didn't need the big heavy circular saw that I could use this. So we'll, we'll see how it goes. Well, it turns out the tool was not very good. I don't know if it's because the blade wasn't sharp or it was underpowered or something, but it kept on overheating. It kept on binding. It was just very hard to use. And uh, I struggled with it way longer than I should have. I had a hard time placing the bottom shelf in place. I don't know if it's because my frame was not as square as I thought it was, or I was cutting poorly or something, but I had to make a lot of adjustments to the piece until it finally fit. For the back panels, I once again used the workpiece itself to make out the measurements rather than relying on my Fusion 360 plans, which may or may not have been accurate anymore. Before cutting all the side panels, I cut one and then just made sure that it fit everywhere. I thought if I held down my workpiece securely, it would keep my circular saw from smoking, but nope. I tried using my mini circular saw one more time, but it just was not working out, so I gave up on it finally and I switched to my jigsaw which did a great job and was like really easy to use. By the way, because my workshop is so tiny, I have to do this little dance where I go underneath the large pieces that I'm cutting. Here's the other idea that I borrowed from Steve Ramsey's BMW design, which was to use hardboard as a topper for the workbench to, to protect it from glue, from other things. If you end up messing up the surface, you can just replace it easily. Here I'm using for the first time something called a flush cut bit. And holy crap, that is so satisfying. Look at this. 
It looks beautiful. It's so nice and flush. I had problems getting half inch plywood delivered to my house. Uh, that's a long story. Um, but I had a lot of leftover half inch MDF from a project when I first moved into my apartment. So I decided to use that instead to build all the drawers. MDF is heavy and I had a hard time cutting it on the table saw because it, it was hanging over the side and I, it just made me realize I really need a better way of cutting longer pieces like this on the table saw. I know I'm using the miter gauge incorrectly here. I should be cutting on the right side of the workpiece, not on the left, but I do it correctly later. I had miscounted and I need to cut a few more pieces. So I kept the table saw where it was, cut a new piece of MDF off and then used an existing piece as a template to set the next measurement that I needed on the table saw and then cut the pieces. That ensured that the pieces that I cut were exactly the same size as the pieces I had already cut. A dry fit confirms that all the pieces are the right size and shape and I'm ready for the glue up. Other than using glue and a nail gun, I wasn't sure how I was going to put these drawers together. So as I went along, I tried different ways of using clamps and squares until I felt comfortable with a technique that seemed to be stable and also let me move pretty quickly. Once the drawer frames were glued up and ready, I started on the drawer bottoms by cutting pieces of quarter inch plywood. By the way, this is the correct way of cutting a large piece on the table saw using two push blocks. Next, I moved on to cutting the rails for the drawers and I cut one piece. Then I used that to place a stop block at the end of my, my miter saw so that I could quickly cut all the remaining rails without having to measure. Some of my one by twos were curved, so I had to try to figure out where to cut them to get the best straight pieces that I could. However, I still had pieces that were curved, so I used a hand plane to flatten them out as best I could. I used a spacer to make sure that I was placing the rail that went onto the side of the drawers in the right location.
some of the nails that I used in my nail gun came out the other side of the wood, so I had to uh, file them down. I also used a little handsaw to to clean up the ends of the rails so that they would sit flush. Now all I had left to do was to attach all the rails on the inside of the space where the drawers went. Like I did before, I created a little spacer so that I could set the rails at the right spot and screw them in. I hadn't noticed it yet, but I had made a mistake in the spacing of the drawers, which I discovered later. Once I had finished putting in all the drawers, I started working on the drawer fronts. I cut one large piece of quarter inch plywood and then measured out the size of each drawer front on the table saw and then used a miter gauge to cut them all out. I use a small square to mark where the drawers should be placed in relation to the drawer fronts and then attach them together using screws and glue. When I placed all the drawers in their slots, I realized that something was amiss, but I decided to worry about that later and instead focus on adding the drawer pulls to the drawers themselves. I had a bunch of leftover old timey looking drawer pulls and I decided to use those instead of make ones out of wood. I erased leftover pencil marks from the drawer fronts and then moved on to the supports for the shelf on the left side of the workbench. Turns out that using quarter inch plywood for the side panels was a bit of a mistake because it's not very thick and I could easily poke through it on the other side, which is what happened here. To try and fix it, I made another hole for another screw, but I split the wood so I had to glue it and clamp it. This was a very satisfying moment when I put the shelf in, it fit in perfectly and it was stable and I could start using it right away. So now I could turn my attention back to the drawers which had looked weird to me. I figured out what was wrong. They weren't level. That's a problem, right? So what I figured out was the very bottom, the very first drawer I had not made level and so then every drawer that followed was off by a little bit on the left hand side and it wasn't level because i had used the rail that i had shaved with a hand plane luckily the mistake i made was very consistent across all the rails so to fix it i just used some of the cutoffs from my two by fours and glued them into place I still had a big gap at the top of the set of drawers, but I didn't care because they all looked really good. They were all level and in place. I was really quite happy with it. 
Then I just had some finishing touches like wax on the rails and labels for all the little drawer pulls. Be a lot more practical and hurt. Ah, f I'm so close. <laughs>